to talk a little bit more about allergy and kind of what makes us different in the way that we treat allergy. A um, little bit of a funny story with that. I myself um, grew up as just a severe allergy patient and went to two different allergists, actually did allergy shots for several years and um, was still eating dairy at that time. So I think the shots for me may have been more effective had people told me to you know look into dietary things and stuff like that but after several years of traditional shots I mean I was I was still a train wreck from an allergy perspective so when I was actually interviewing here for this job and Dr. Lieberman walked me into the allergy room I looked at him and I basically said you know no offense I'm not saying the allergy treatment doesn't work I'm just saying it didn't work for me and he said this is a completely different technique don't knock it till you try it and I was astounded at how well it worked for me. Like literally within about three months of being on my allergy shots, I could actually hold my neighbor's cat. And previous to that, if I even looked at a cat, I would have an asthma attack and explode and go into hives. And um, I mean, it was just it was one of my more severe allergens. And so I was shocked at how well the technique worked. So what's the difference? Well, basically, and the, the good news from an allergy perspective, there's several different techniques out there. There's, there's escalation therapy, which is what most traditional allergists will use. There's a technique called serial endpoint titration, which a lot of the ENT, otolaryngology allergists prefer that technique. The technique that we're using has always been called provocative neutralization. I really don't like that term, to be honest with you. I, must wish, I, I wish we would call it like optimal dose therapy or something like that. But so what makes us unique is we're going to test one thing at a time. Normally we're doing testing on the skin, on the arm, and we're injecting a measured amount of a measured concentration dose of whatever antigen that we're going to test. So let's just say we're going to start with dust mite or, or something like that. So we're going to place a, a measured amount of dose intradermally, so it's not a scratch or prick test, but we're actually going to inject it into the dermis, and we're going to raise a wheel. Um, we're going to measure the amount of the wheel, record that, and we're going to wait about 8 to 10 minutes, and then look and see, does that wheel expand? Is there redness? Is there swelling? Does it get kind of hard and discoid? All of those things would basically represent a positive reaction, meaning that the body is reacting to that thing with an inflammatory response. So then if it's positive, which says, okay, we've, we've caught something, we've got something this person's reactive to, we're then going to use different dilutions of that very same thing. So if it was dust, we're actually usually going to go with a, a lesser concentration, and we'll test it as many times as we need to until we get to the non-wheeling dose. That's the key. So basically at the non-wheeling dose, the body is no longer responding to that antigen with an inflammatory response. And some of the research makes it look like it's potentially responding to the allergen at that dose with a suppressed immune response, where basically the, the hormones, the cytokines that the immune system communicates with um, among itself instead of telling the body we've got an enemy that we need to attack at the preferred dose it's actually probably saying hey we've got dust mite over here but it's no big deal calm down and so sometimes treating with the non-provoking dose actually relieves symptoms and makes people feel better um, we do not change that dose that would become the person's treatment dose and over time as it's given either as a shot or even as a sublingual drop the immune system learns uh, tolerance to that particular thing. And again, I was a skeptic. I didn't really think it was going to work, and I was astounded how well it worked for me. But I, I really, I think it, we should call it optimal dose therapy because that's what we're trying to do is to find the non-provoking dose, treat with that dose in an effort to teach tolerance back to the immune system to that particular thing. And then in another video, I'm going to go into another way that we kind of differ, um, which almost confuses people, you know, because we're going to call it allergy, but we may actually want to call it more like antigen testing or something like that. So, all right. Come